this feast of Pentecost. We come to you from St. Francis de Sales on East 96th Street. I'm Father Kelly, I'm the pastor, and I will be the celebrant today as we enter into these sacred mysteries. So as always, we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My sisters and brothers, as we gather this morning, we recognize the Spirit is with us. In a very special way, we celebrate the fullness of the Spirit on this Feast of Pentecost. So we pause for a moment, we examine our consciences in the light of the Gospel, and we ask the Spirit to come to heal and to bring us an awareness of our sinfulness, but more importantly, God's mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned greatly in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my sisters and brothers, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Glory, a glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will.
Let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church in every people and nation, pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth. And with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly, there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them as tongues of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under the sun staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they all gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, are these not all people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, yet we hear them speaking in our own tongue of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Send out your spirit, Lord, send out your spirit, Lord, send out your spirit, and renew the face of the earth, 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 and renew the face of the earth, Lord, send out your spirit, Lord, send out Of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say, Jesus is Lord, 
except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of the one spirit. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. As I was preparing for this Sunday celebration of Pentecost. I realized I would be celebrating, as we record this, the gospel, proclaiming the gospel from the day of Pentecost, not the vigil, but I wanted to read all the readings because this is such a rich feast. And when I went to the vigil, what struck me was John's gospel. It had particular relevance for me because Jesus speaks of the living water. And that living water is the Holy Spirit. And I chuckled to myself because, as some of you may know, over the past week, we had a bit of a leak problem in the church. Down in the boiler room, the main pipe that brings water into the building, because of corrosion and age, all sorts of things had to be repaired and replaced. Several thousand dollars later, and uh, phone calls and all sorts of frustration that comes with having to do repairs on older buildings, we've got it fixed. But I chuckled because I thought, on this feast day, we think about the water not coming into the building, but water moving out of the building. Because that's what the feast is all about. How we as believers have been formed by Jesus, given the fullness of the Spirit, and then sent out. In this time of pandemic, as we have struggled with social isolation, And how do we continue to maintain our spiritual unity? We've come to understand the realness of church that moves out of the confines of this building. Beautiful as it is, important as it needs to be to us for all sorts of reasons. We recognize this is not where we're supposed to stay. We're supposed to move out. The waters of baptism 
which has brought, have brought us into the church, have cleansed and renewed and strengthened us, move us out. And the Spirit, like water, has a radical quality of movement. And we're called into that movement. We need to discern where we are and where the Spirit desires to take us, and then we need to have the flexibility to be brought along. And that brings us to today's Gospel, where Jesus meets the disciples where they're at, in the upper room, on the day of resurrection, fearful, struggling with this new reality. We certainly can understand that behind locked doors, fearful in many ways of other people and of all the possibilities of pathogen that await us out there. And yet Jesus comes through, unnoticed, we're given to believe. Didn't break the door down or have a special lock. He is just there in his glorified body. And he begins to change their reality. And he changes their reality, how? By saying to them, peace be with you. It's a peace that only he could give because it comes from a man who has been crucified, who has entered into death and has come back. He has been changed. And so too this community, this church that we come to understand being formed will be changed. In their fearfulness, they will be given courage. They will be given a sense of mission to go out from that upper room and to bring Jesus in his crucified and resurrected person to a world in need of healing. And that's what he says to them. I'm sending you out to free people from sinfulness, to reconcile, to heal, to have the power that is part of resurrection, to make new, to bring peace. And peace in this context, in the context of what Jesus calls peace, is the right ordering of a world. Right now, in the middle of a pandemic, as we struggle to come back from, understand anew how we're going to be, we as a country are also struggling with a sense of peacefulness, or I should say, a lack of peacefulness. And it takes the form of racism. This past week, we saw a tragedy unfold in Minnesota, in Minneapolis. We saw a man lose his life publicly. And we are grappling with what that means for us. Because it wasn't just someone indiscriminately losing their life because of an accident. There was a deliberate quality to what happened. When a person puts a knee on a person's neck and doesn't remove it, in spite of a plea that I can't breathe, we all need to stand up and pay attention. Because in a real way, the breath has left corporate America us as a society, us as a culture. Because together, we can't breathe. Because of the oppressiveness of the racism, which is present in this and so many other acts. It wasn't very long ago that another name, another man, came to our consciousness. Ahmaud Arbery, who was hunted down. Now, rightfully, the FBI is looking into this. And we have a judicial system that we pray and hope will find answers and seek justice. And that is rightfully the realm of what the justice system is meant to do. But as a culture, as a society, as a country, there's harder work ahead for us as we examine a culture that allows this kind of indiscriminate killing to continue. Racism, which robs all of us of the peace of Christ because it is the antithesis of life. It disparages and mocks the gift and the creator. In today's second reading, we hear Paul speak about the body of Christ, which has been formed through baptism, through Christ's cross and resurrection that we've been invited to be part of, and then sent to make real in the society. We, as a country, are not a Christian country. 
We believe in a separation of church and state, but we would be remiss in recognizing the contribution that Christianity has made to the ethics which undergird our society and our culture, ethics which are rooted in a justice that Christ speaks about in God's peace, where all persons created equal are recognized in the sacredness of their lives, lives that need to be protected, lives that need to be valued. And when one person is devalued, all of us suffer. We as a country need to do a good examination of conscience, an examination of conscience that will bring us to personal responsibility in terms of the racism we may harbor in our own lives and the societal racism which is impossible to deny. The peace of Christ, which goes beyond all human understanding, which is offered to us in the entire Christian church on this Feast of Pentecost, is ours. But it's not a peace that we can take for granted. It is a peace that comes through the crucified one, the resurrected one, who stands before us and shows them what peace truly means, hands and sighs that have been marked by violence. As we look at the cross lived out in our own country, in these two men whose lives were taken tragically, we have to, with Christ, enter into that wound and seek healing and reconciliation. Jesus is very clear in today's gospel that his peace, the peace that he comes to bring through cross and resurrection, can only be achieved when we have the courage to enter into that wound when we have the moral fortitude to begin to stand with all those who are victims of racism, xenophobia, misogyny, homophobia, every ideology that destroys the body of Christ and protests with every fiber within us, this is against God and there is a better, more peaceful way. On this Feast of Pentecost, I know you join me and so many other persons of goodwill in praying for these men, praying for all those who have been victims of violence related to racism, and pray for the conversion of ourselves and of our country. Amen. Together, if you join me as we profess our faith, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered at a punctious pilot, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Together let us bring before God our prayer of faith. The coming of the Holy Spirit signaled a new age when peace and reconciliation could abound. With hearts still longing for that peace and reconciliation, we cry out to God for all in need. That those entrusted with the ministry of leadership in the church will be revitalized by a new Pentecost that reveals evermore the fire of God's love, we pray to the Lord. That those entrusted with the leadership of the nations of this world will seek ways to ensure lasting peace, we pray to the Lord. We pray for healing from racism, from ideologies that deprive us of the image of God found in our sisters and brothers, we pray to the Lord. That those grasped by the power of the Holy Spirit, especially the newly baptized, will lead lives of service and witness, we pray to the Lord that the sick will know the healing power of the risen Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. In a special way, we pray for Elizabeth Finnegan, Thomas Francis Murphy, Laurie Siegel, Jerome Pinnell, Helen Fernandez, Raphael Mauleon. We pray to the Lord. That those who have died will rejoice in the reward of everlasting life, we remember in a special way, Amoud Arbery, George Floyd,
Thomas Taff, Preck Jakaj, Jimmy Giblin, Jimmy Glenn, Norma de Guzman, Mary Spice, Henry Vosnick, Victoria Marleon, and Anne Flores. We pray to the Lord. We remember the intention for which we offer this morning's Eucharist for Marie Gardella and Vincent McDonald. We pray to the Lord. Listen to your people, O God of love. Send the power of the Holy Spirit to those who long for your presence. We make our power in the name of your Son, Jesus, who is Lord forever and ever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for bringing your Paschal mystery to completion. You bestow the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. gives you praise for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. 
Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. For, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis de Sales, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. to be the body of Christ, Jesus sends his spirit and empowers us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all anxiety as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I 
leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. So as always at this point in our celebration, we want to welcome anyone who is new here. This is our custom at St. Francis. Usually we ask people to just call out their name and where they're from, and we're able to welcome them in person. So we welcome you digitally this morning if you've just joined us. If you want to find out more information about us, get to our webpage. You'll see it on 
on the screen there, and you can find more information about how you may become a member or learn more or become more active. But we really delight in being able to welcome you in this Feast of Pentecost as we move out as missionary disciples. That's our job, that's our gift, our vocation, is to welcome and to invite into fuller friendship and fellowship in Christ. So on behalf of the community here, we welcome you if this is your first time with us. We also want to salute those who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. So this week, in terms of birthdays, we have Marjorie Rosero, who is celebrating a birthday and a wedding anniversary. We send out a shout out to Lacey and Jorge Vargas, who are celebrating. And I'd ask you to join with me as we raise our hands, calling the spirit down on these, our sisters and brothers. Almighty God, we give you thanks for this gift that you have given us, this church, this body of Christ that allows us to stay in communion with you through one another. Allow the power of our prayer this morning to reach out and bless these, our sisters and brothers who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. May they always feel your powerful love and their connectedness with us. May they always be moving outwards in the direction that the Spirit sends them so that they may evermore be blessed with the gift of their baptism. And we ask the Spirit to be with them this day and all the days of their life as we bless them, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. And we congratulate you, and we look forward to when we can congratulate you in person, because we have a whole bunch of birthday blessings and anniversaries to catch up in person with one another, and we look forward to that day. Speaking about that, as people begin to ask us, we hear all sorts of news reports. I think what we're trying to do is do the thing in terms of reopening that will be the safest for everyone concerned. And obviously, because we've never had this happen, we are learning as we go along, and we want to make sure that we don't rush into it. So the best way to find out where we are in the process is once again to check with us online. All the information will be there as soon as we have it. We will make sure it's up and out there so that you can share in it. A few more announcements. Uh, we were deeply gratified to come together last week uh, to talk as a parish to discern what it means to be church in this time of pandemic. Over 35 persons joined our conversation. It was wonderful to see one another's face, faces and to listen to yours, our concerns. We want to continue this important conversation this coming Wednesday, June 3rd at 7.10 p.m. We are pleased to welcome Father Tony Ciora, who so many of us know is a part of our parish family, to the conversation this time around also. In order to focus our conversation a bit more this time around, we would ask you to prayerfully consider this question, what in particular are you concerned about in this time of transformative change in the church, in our world? And we look forward to seeing you next week. Pray a little bit about that. Think about that and come ready to, to question or to discuss or to answer, to join the discernment. Monday night inquiry sessions, as we usually do them in person in the rectory, we're now doing them digitally. So if you have questions about faith, about God, about the church, if you put your foot in a little bit, you want to see if the water is warm, this is for you. It's not signing up for anything. It's just kind of a Q&A where people come together and discern. Spirit is present. We have parish staff. We have folks who are part of the RCIA team who are there to answer questions, to discern, and to pray with you. It's on uh, this Monday evening. Our group will gather via Zoom, June 1st, 15th, and the 29th. And for more details, you can reach out to Jane Porcelli, who's our Director of Religious Formation, Adult Faith Formation, our RCIA here, and you'll see on your screen her email to be able to ask any questions and to find out more details. As always, we ask you to be safe. We continue to follow protocols. It's good to see New York is beginning to continue to reduce the curve. That's because so many of you, of us, have worked so hard to keep one another safe. Uh, I'd encourage you to use those masks. I know we're doing it here at the rectory. Don't have one on now for obvious reasons, but we use them as a part of our protocol. We'd encourage you to do the same thing. It's a very pro-life thing to do as we not only care about ourselves, but we care about our neighbors. So keep up the good work. Stay safe. 
know that the parish staff here with myself is united daily in praying for you and with you. And we will come through this. On this feast of Pentecost, the coming of the Spirit, we recognize the power that has been given to us by Jesus, that radical peace that we have come to be part of and to share with others. So we bless you in Christ's peace today. And we send you as the Spirit sends you forth in mutual faith and love from all here on the parish staff. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. I'm running.